Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on Ghana tonight. I'll start off with you, Honorable Haran Idrisu, Minority Leader. You are one of two proponents of this particular motion. What happened today, the majority walked out. This, some say, was expected. Why did you think that the majority was going to support you in this motion that you had put forward? Thank you very much. The majority, by their own actions and conduct and public statement, gave indication that they themselves are dissatisfied with the performance of the Honorable Minister of Finance, Ken Ophuriata. So it was for us to build consensus in the interest of our country in saving the economy to bid him farewell and to bid him goodbye. The state of Ghana's economy, uh, to say that it's in crisis, is an understatement. One would have thought that Ken of Uriata would have resigned long ago for leading the country into this economic mess or economic catastrophe. Where on earth have you heard that because of COVID and Ukraine, any country in South Saharan Africa is undertaking a debt structuring initiative called a debt exchange program. The banks and financial institutions that have invested in government bonds and instruments feel threatened and may not have liquidity. There is unacceptable hardships in Ghana. Real incomes have deteriorated. The government have borrowed between 120 to 440 billion unprecedented in the country's history. Inflation is all time high. Depreciation of the city 54%. Somebody must be held responsible for that. And it's a view of the minority that the Honorable Minister for Finance be held solely responsible for the economic mess. We are disappointed by it as we expected that the majority will do this harm to oversight. But mm -hmm. we are particularly I see. Uh, happy about one development, that at least the Parliament of Ghana has proven that there is a power of censorship vested in Parliament, and that can be a check on incompetence by ministers of state and ministers who betray the public uh, trust. Be uh, but what has happened today strengthens parliamentary oversight. It's unfortunate that we don't have the numbers, but I kept saying that the threshold is onerous. You need to test majority. The In Ghanaian people did not give the NDC minority that number. But, but, but you knew this. Honorable minority leader, you knew this. I mean, so here's the thing. The positive aspect that you highlight, which is good, but then again, this goes right down to a numbers situation, isn't it? I mean, right from the get-go, you knew you had to get about 48 NPP MPs to support this. That's why many hold the view that from the point you began this path of emotion, it was a fruitless exercise. It was going to be just a charade. It's, it's, Much ado it's about nothing. Not, it's certainly not. That's why the majority prevented their members from partaking in the secret voting, if they did would have been there because there are a number of discontent and there are a number of them who are real, who want to reflect the suffering of Ghanaian people, reflect what they are concerned about them to do as they themselves postulated a month ago. I see. So your, your point is that if the majority leadership in parliament had allowed the MPs to take part in the secret ballot, they voluntarily, could, they, voluntarily. They, we would have won the day. They know that. I see. B but is this the end of the road for you? I mean, with this quest of getting the finance I mean, minister that, out? That brings, that brings closure to the censorship motion in respect of the finance minister. We we'll explore other avenues to hold President Nana Dutankwa and the MPP accountable to the Ghanaian people. I mean, take the cathedral, for instance. How can you spend 300, and 300 million Ghana cities 
and yet work does not show that you spend this colossal amount of money on that. Well, some of your members, in fact, I've spoken to some others who think that some of the reasons, the seven reasons underlying this motion was going to be hard to prove. But the tool that was taken out eventually, the, the conflict of interest case, was one that if you had impressed upon the committee not to strike them out, you could have pursued it to the end as well. I'm surprised. Every point on our grounds, we have proven it. Cathedral is spent. What do you mean by misappropriation? When you spend more than Parliament granted you approval, that's a wrong to the PFM Act. When you allow GMPC to borrow 164 million without parliamentary approval, that's a wrong. Is there no hardship in the country? Didn't his bank, data bank, benefit from some of the borrowing? of the $11 billion they have borrowed in the last six years. I mean, what they cannot do in six years, they are now promising Ghanaians that they will be able to do that in two years. We leave that to the judgment of the Ghanaian people, but we are a satisfied minority that at least we've done what the Ghanaian people expect us to do within the limitations of our numbers. I see. But then again, the Honorable Katie Amon says you didn't make any findings against Ken as, as, I mean, the committee it, itself. So as, as, as the chairman, uh, Katie Amon, what findings did his committee make? His committee just said, we heard from Haruna, this is what he said. We heard from Ken that this is what he said. No finding of fact, no recommendation. I've never seen that in any parliamentary committee report. Have money been spent on cathedrals? Is that the money guarantee value for money? Has GMPC borrowed money which ought to be in the petroleum holding fund or not? I just think that we must get serious as a country. But in the end, even if this motion had gone through, assuming, it will still have the president make the final call, isn't it? I mean, as stipulated in the Constitution. Yeah, if you go strictly to the letter and spirit of Article 8825, maybe you are right. But there are those who argue that once the threshold is done and Parliament have by two thirds taken that decision, the media shall be read as a shall. That's others' opinion. But these are matters that are contestable in the Supreme Court. And one may, someone may want to invoke their uh, uh, interpretive jurisdiction to deal with it. I see. Hold on a bit for me, the Honorable Minority Leader, Arnold Idris.